action. What is your name, age, and what do you do for fun? My name is Derry, um, also known as Tic Tac. Um, I'm 15 years old and I do football YouTube. When was the first time you ever kicked the football? So uh, I was really young. Um, I wasn't really into football, but you know everyone played football. So I thought I'd. Well, my parents got me a pair of football boots, got me a ball. I remember having this um, this white normal like football that you see everywhere, all over the world. You know the just the the, the football that every, the whole world knows as. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I just remember kicking that around the back garden. Just that was the, really the first time I ever played football. No serious part of it. I didn't want to be a footballer, just, just for a bit of fun. What made you think when you were that young that maybe you wanted to pursue that footballing dream and do what you're doing now, so to speak? Really, at that age, I didn't really think about it that much. I didn't really want to become a footballer. It was more of all my friends are playing football. Let me go kick a ball about as well. Um, it was like, like you, um, you were playing football. I wanted to join in. I just wanted to be a part of everyone else. And everyone, because of their head start, they were all better than me. So um, it's like when you start something new, you get better and better practice. Um, I just wanted to get good at the sport. How did you cope with the bullying? So, um, considering I was bullied for being bad at football at around how old, seven, eight, and maybe nine, so three years, so in a range of three years, I was bullied for um, for being bad at football. So the way I coped with it really was going to my best friend, which is Yeston, and um, just just talking to him about how I can get better and just thinking of ways to improve to prove people wrong. To be honest with you, um, that's how I really cope with most things: is proving people wrong and just getting better. Why do you think that you have to prove to your prove to other people that you are worthy of that expectation? It's because I know deep down that I can do it and I know like my capabilities and what I can actually do and where I know I can end up if I put my mind to it and just stick to something. How did you help Derry when he was being bullied? Um, I didn't even really know who Derry was at that young age. I'd just seen a boy getting uh, picked on, getting pushed about, and I just thought, no, I'm not going to let this happen. I walked over to Derry. I was trying to make him feel that he was welcome in, into my group and like know, make him know that he's like wanted in school. And from that moment, our friendship just blossomed and it's turned into something great. How long have you actually been friends with uh, TikTok? Now, for that question, I'm not really sure. But from what Derry's saying, it's 10 plus years. But we have to figure that out. Who made you fall fully in love with the sport called football? So it was a lot of people really, um, like most people would say like their dads, um, but my dad didn't actually make me fall in love with football, he has, uh, he's got a very vital part in my football journey though, but he comes in later because um, Yestin and his dad no um, noticed that I enjoyed football. Um, so they took me along to Cardiff games. I bought a season ticket with Cardiff and sat next to them for a whole season in the Premier League. So uh, yeah, Yestin's dad and Yestin, they, they made me fall in love with football. But to continue a love with football, you need someone that's going to take you places like trials and games and training and everything like that and buy you the equipment you need, the boots and put money towards stuff like that, the fill together. And my dad's been an absolutely vital part in that. Um, he's taken me everywhere he's now um, got a season ticket at Cardiff with me I've made him fall in love with football as well but he's more to the watching side of it rather than the playing uh, although he does play a bit himself he uh, he comes down and trains with me if I have no one else to train with um, he trained me the most he um, to be fair to him he, he taught me the most because every Sunday he would train without fail every Sunday and he'd just get me better because he, he knew my capabilities and he knows what I'm capable of just like myself and my friends around me um, but yeah, Yestin's dad put me into the love of football by taking me to those games. But yeah, it was a lot of people. And then watching football, Lionel Messi, he um, he made me realise small players can do it too. Small players can actually get what Cristiano 
Cristiano Ronaldo get out of things like uh, the headers we've all seen that messy header so uh, yeah it's, it's lots of people that have helped me with this but mainly the dads yes it's dad and my dad so going back to the bit where you said that your dad every Sunday going down playing football with you when you had no one else to how much do you think that impacted your dad's life by evolving himself around your sporting life well it's it's helped him as well as me as it's just extra exercise and it just keeps you out of the house it gets you keeping fit and um, it, it may not be that much an hour a week it's, it's it's not that much but it is when it's with your family it's quality time that you can't get back because one day well, we're going to be too old for that, and I'm I'm going to have stuff to do, and he's going to well be too old to actually physically play football. So it's it's mainly for the memories. I know he I know he loved it because he used to tell me every time how much he loved playing football with me. How much has Derry's football in life affected your Saturday morning, Sunday mornings? How has that affected you? Well, I've had to go to all of the matches he, he plays for. It's very annoying and I just have to watch him. And I, it is sometimes nice because I get to see how much he's progressed over years and stuff. But overall, I found it quite annoying because I have to wake up early. <laughs> like Derry said, um, I got Derry into the sporting world, if you want. Um, getting him, taking him to games. Now Derry's sort of taking you to games, so how are you sort of getting a love and bond for football? Well actually I used to hate football so much where I just didn't really want to even listen to anything he said about it and now I, I'm fine with it. I just like every now and then I will go down to the field and kick about a ball it's much better. So you can truly say that you can go from hating the sport so much to now loving this, loving and sharing the same compassion with your own brother. I wouldn't say loving it, but yeah, I like it more than I used to. How did you help Derry love football? Uh, if I'm being completely honest with you, it went that hard because I knew he had the love for the sport anyway. And really speaking, it was just the same bond that we both shared together. So I just one day I asked my uh, we had a spare ticket and I was asking my dad. I was nagging, nagging, nagging. I was like, Dad, can I take Derry to his first ever football match? And in a heartbeat, he said, Yeah, no worries. So Derry comes up, and I still remember the day. It was Aston Villa. Uh, we won three one, and from that moment, from that day on. Derry was always asking, when can he come see the next Cardiff game? I was asking my dad, when can Derry not come see the next Cardiff game? And it ended up being weekly, um, every Saturday. It was it sort of become a routine. Derry pick it, coming down, picking Derry up, driving straight up to Cardiff. But I think that's what I did for Derry to make him love the sport as much as he does to the day. What gives you the motiv motivation to train every day? Um, a lot of things gave me the motivation. It was um, to do with the bullying as well. Um, I still to this day remember how I was treated for being bad at football. I was bullied for just not being able to kick a ball. <laughs> it's just like stupid. If I, if I saw today a footballer, young footballer, wasn't very good, I'd, I'd encourage him to continue to play. I wouldn't, wouldn't want him to stop. I'd want him to get to where he is, or him or her. I'd want him to get to where they where they want to be with football so it's the bullying but then it's also like sarcastic comments from people about my youtube channel i get to this day very uh, often um people make fun of me still um but i to be fair i do get a lot of support off people around me in school i get a lot of support but then there's always that one or two that make sarcastic comments you can tell they're sarcastic it's people like that that give me the drive and motivation to become something better do you think that for you to then progress to be the professional, the pro, the, the YouTube star, do you think you'd have to go with then people that drive you, give them sarcastic comments, or do you think you'll have to surround yourself in a big group, big good group of people, so then to make you that push that drive to say this is for you? 
so it's both. I, I like to I like to spend time with both because just spending time with people that tell you that you're good at everything, you don't actually know how good you are. But if you spend time with people that criticise you, you know exactly how good you are. Because if you're doing well, they'll criticise you. And if you're not doing well, they'll criticise you, but you know it's true. So, um, loads of people that criticise me that I put myself with, um, I know what I'm doing, and they'll criticise me, they'll think I'll get hurt by it. But deep down I know, I couldn't care less. Um, but it, it works well, because uh, that's the way I improve. But the good thing about hanging around with people that tell you, well done, you're doing well, keep going, is that you genuinely get like that good feeling and you, you know, most of the time they can be like right and they're genu being genuine. But um, yeah, just surround yourself with both, it really helps. Do you think by going, like, because the good people are always nice to you, telling you well done, good this, good that. Do you think then when, you are doing something wrong and they tell you it, do you think, hold on a minute, you're the good people that I turn to, or do you take it with a pinch of salt and you're like, yeah, do you know what, they were right. I'll be honest, sometimes I do take things to heart and I do get a bit angry, as um, if, if you're watching this and you and you know me personally, um, then you'll know that I do take stuff quite, um, quite, I take it to heart, but I shouldn't, and I'm, I'm working on that. I know that I shouldn't, as as you as a friend, as one of my best friends, if you told me something that I didn't like, at first I'd be quite hurt, but as I think about it more and think about the truth of it, um, I, I, I agree with you more, and if you told me that I need to work on something now, at first I'd be like, really? And then as I grew into it a bit more, I'd be like, oh, maybe I do, and then I'd go and work on that. So when people, I don't, I'm getting much better. If you told me something t now, today, I think I'd, I'd take it with a pinch of salt now. But previously, quite recently, the past couple of months, I wasn't very good at that. Why did you start TikTok and why? Um, I started TikTok in 2020 in lockdown um, because like loads of people were dying and stuff from COVID-19 and um, so it was just like TikTok was somewhere that everybody could go to watch videos to get them out of the real world to see what other people are doing, having fun, to get ideas. So I joined TikTok and um, yeah, I, I saw I saw a bunch of people playing football, posting football videos, so I got inspired by that and I wanted to post videos like that, but I couldn't because I was only allowed a private account. So um, yeah, I was posting videos for my friends on, on my private account and some of my friends would tell me I'd make some good content. Um, so uh, yeah, that made me really want to start TikTok fully. So you've been in a few of Demi's TikToks, not too many, but um, what was it like being in his TikToks? Well, I actually love it because, well, it's TikTok and I'm not allowed TikTok. And just to be honest, the videos don't get many views when I'm in them, but I love being in them because a couple hundred people watch to get like <laughs> hundred people, a couple hundred people actually watch your videos when I'm in them. And that's a lot for me. Like, I'm only 11. A couple hundred people see me. <laughs> Famous, isn't it? <laughs> Famous. What's your favourite TikTok of, of mine? Oh, the one who's quite a while back where you did the bicycle kick and it went top left. Yeah. What made you want to start a YouTube channel? So the main thing that actually made me want to start a YouTube channel was making short form content on TikTok and I saw YouTube videos that um, they were like showing how to make long form content and it really inspired me to start making these long form YouTube videos. Um, I, I always really wanted to start YouTube, I just didn't know where to get started. So by making videos on my phone and then moving on to the camera that I currently have, buying these microphones and everything like that, it, um, it kind of inspired me to continue with this journey on YouTube. What content did you think you would do when you started YouTube? I thought I'd be making football content, but um, as I move on, 
um, I've moved on to yeah, I was continuing with football content I've moved on to like um, I'm thinking of doing other style of video but um, I'm obviously going to continue with football as much as possible um, but yeah for mainly football content I thought I was going to start with as I did what is it like being in Derry's YouTube videos? I love it because well the small amount of views it gets there's still people watching me and you and also so like when we're filming them say now we're down the field and some people will come up to us and start watching us recording a video I don't like it because I was like I can't like say now someone's stood right there watching us record I can't do it it's just it's through the camera it's easy because you know, they're not there but if someone's there it's I can't what is the pressure of having someone there what why does it make you feel that way well I just don't like them there like do you know what I mean I know what you mean yeah. so if someone's there they're watching you and you're just like if I mess this up, it's going to be funny. <laughs> what would you do if there's a whole production team there, though, in the future? That'd be fine. I'd, I'd be friends with them. <laughs> Can you tell us some of your achievements on social media? Um, so, I'll start with TikTok. I have um, 6,000 and something follows on TikTok with 22,000 views with no not 22,000 views 22,000 likes um, and well god knows how many views because uh, 22,000 likes so it's probably a lot of views um, and then if we move on to YouTube I've got 361 subscribers at the time of recording with 70,000 views and over 600 and something thousand impressions it's going well for a starter so it's going well for now it's going well um, um, we're going up on social media hopefully we can get to the 10,000 mark on TikTok and maybe the 1,000 mark on YouTube by the end of 2023 so yeah what are your goals for the future so what I want to do is I want to become a professional footballer and do like Ben Foster style videos is what I want to do but the likeliness of that happening is extremely low as well to make you as a footballer so less than 1% chance and to make you as a YouTube well content creator on any platform is a really low chance as well well if you become a footballer surely people should know who you are and then your youtube channel would be a bit better you know yeah that's true but um people have also got to enjoy your content so by playing like football and doing youtube now it kind of it shows me what the future might be like so um yeah my goals for the future is mainly just to yeah do that but my like statistically i want to be at 10,000 followers on TikTok by the end of 2024. End of 2024. I know that's the end of next year. I've got quite a while to do that. And I want to be on 1,000 subscribers by the end of 2024 as well. Preferably 2023 for both. But it just seems unachievable at the minute as I have got GCSEs and all that stuff to, to cover at the minute. Right. So, that's a wrap. <laughs>